extent. And we've recently released a, a new workflow module, which expands overdrive functional, functionality to a whole new level. So we'll be showing a little bit about uh, general overdrive functionality, what it can do, what it's being used for currently. And then we'll be spending a lot of time on uh, workflow to show how it works, what it can do, how it can work, etc. cetera. Um, my name is Sean Power, and I'm one of the consultants here at uh, Refractive. Uh, and Refractive are the, the, the owners and the creators of Overdrive. So you may see both names used in, in our communication with our help desk or uh, trial accounts, et cetera. The session today will last around 30 minutes uh, and we'll make a recording available afterwards, which we'll send to you. So you can review the information or send it to your colleagues, etc. cetera, if, uh, if you need to. If you do have any questions during the event, then there's a, there's a chat box on your screen. Pop the, uh, the question in there and uh, we'll try to answer them either as the, uh, uh, as the session progresses or at the end if we have time. And if we run out of time, then we'll do that the, uh, after the session. Um, so you get the answers that you need. So feel free to, to ask anything that you may need. So this is the uh, agenda for today. Uh, we have a few slides to introduce the OverDrive product, as I said, and the, especially the workflow module. And then we'll bring it all to life with a demonstration where we'll build a, a workflow um, live for you and show you how it works and, and, and see what can be done uh, with, the, with the module. As I said, we'll also take a look at some of the potential uses of OverDrive uh, and how these can add value to your organization or your customers' organizations. And finally, we'll discuss possible next steps in your investigation of overdrive workflow for your organization. And we'll answer any questions which may have arisen during the session if we have time, as I said. Uh, we'll also have a, a special offer at the end of the session uh, just for attendees of this webinar. So we'll get to that later. So overdrive, what is it? What can it do? Um, essentially, it's designed for organizations using G Suite. Uh, and this is because it's deeply integrated with G Suite and it lets you create a, a website or a portal automatically from content held within Drive and elsewhere within G Suite. With OverDrive, you can create great looking web pages and portals without the need for specialist skills. You simply decide what content you wish to share, choose from a wide range of page types and ways to display information to suit your content and audience, uh, and then you simply add in your users. Uh, you'll see how this works in the demonstration soon. Your staff and other users will have easy online access to the resources and information that they need. And also any site that's created with OverDrive is automatically mobile friendly. And uh, so your users can access the site on any device from any location which they choose. Uh, it's used by the likes of uh, UNESCO, Greenpeace, Tarmac Construction, um, Allied Wire and Cable, etc., amongst many other organizations. And we'll, show, we'll see some of those uses later in the session. In terms of exactly what these customers are using it for, um, again, it's one of the strengths of Overdrive. It's a variety of uses that uh, it can be employed for. And part of this is because it's got, you have the ability to spin up or create sites very quickly. And that means that you can be created and used for both short and long-term projects. So for instance, if you have an event running, and that's a short-term site, it's short-term use. You use it to uh, include uh, attendee information, locations, feedback forms, presentation decks, whatever you want to include about that event. And then when that event is finished, that site is discarded and not used again. But also, as I said, you can be used for long-term sites like your intranet and your client extranets and areas where uh, information is shared on an ongoing basis with, all, with users both inside and outside the organization. Now, workflow specifically, can be added to any uh, use or any type of site. And in fact, indeed, multiple workflows can exist on one site. Uh, so it really can become the hub of, of uh, processes and work within the organization. And it really is this flexibility of Overdrive, the fact that sites can be created very quickly, and also the fact that users can create as many sites as they want. It's one of Overdrive's key strengths for our users. 
So why workflow? Well, it was an obvious addition to the, to the functionality that was available with Overdrive. Every business has workflows. Um, workflows are defined as regular, repeatable processes, which are undertaken in the same manner every time. So things like paying invoices, raising and authorizing purchase orders, holiday requests, etc. All these are good examples of, of workflows, and you'll have many within your organization as well. These processes are, are usually undertaken manually either with pieces of paper moving around the business or using an application to manage the process. Again, typically you've got the email notifications as part of the workflow process. Now there are many benefits to, to using workflows in the business and whether this is a manual or automated process, they form the backbone of your organization's administration. And that's true regardless of the industry and the size of organization that you, you work with. The benefits really center around two core principles. One, that it's faster to complete a process which has a defined flow, so it's a repeatable process. And two, that it's more accurate to complete a repeatable process as opposed to a one-off. Now, these two core principles mean that the increased efficiency and reduced error rates when a workflow is introduced is key to an organization's success. And this is all possible with a manual paper-based workflow, but the really, as you'll know, the, the real benefits come with the introduction of automation. This simplifies the processes and generally reduces the process time to completion, as well as increasing the accuracy of the process. So there are many other benefits to be gained apart from uh, efficiency and accuracy. Notable amongst these is the fact that workflow can empower users to act without constant instruction. The principle being that the process works, so just to follow the process and repeat that process. And workflows also help you in compliance situations, which can be very useful in industries, uh, which are heavily reliant on compliance, such as financial services and, and public sector. So if we think that workflow is a good idea. Why have we introduced that into OverDrive? Well, really, because it hasn't been available until now for G Suite users. Uh, and in terms of a, a workflow process, which is uh, an application which works in conjunction with G Suite. Now, Overdrive workflow does actually solve this problem for you. It enables you to add workflows based on your drive documents. That's where the data and the content is held. And it adds a whole new perspective to working with your documents. It also allows users easy access to workflow processes through their Google account and complies with the security regulations laid down by the organization. And in addition to all this, the sites with workflow can be used for many other things as discussed earlier in the session. So it's not just a workflow application. Overdrive can do many, many other things, which uh, is a big advantage. So I think that's given you a general introduction to Overdrive, hopefully. What I want to do now is spend most of the time uh, remaining just in a demonstration to actually show how this uh, workflow application works. So I'm just going to shout out of the, uh, the presentation deck. And I'm not going to spend time creating a site for you because I think most of you would have seen that, that process in, in action. So you know how easy it is to create a site from, uh, from my drive. Um, and I've got a completed site here. So this is using the new page builder functionality, which hopefully most of you are seeing. And it's the ability to add multiple uh, layers of content from multiple sources on one page. So I've got things like static images. I've got uh, action buttons. I've got searches. I've got embedded folders, embedded slide decks and graphs, etc. So I'm pulling information from across G Suite and also pulling outside of G Suite, like from Data Studio, Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, anywhere else that I want to pull information from. So if I want to share information, there's a number of ways that that information can be displayed on the OverDrive site. So I'll come up here to one of these folders uh, and I'll use this company reports folder because I know there's quite a lot of content in here. And this is just one way that we can display information uh, to our users. It is a, essentially a, a replication of what's available within the Google Drive folder. <laughs> 
So the information that's in Google Drive has been brought across into this OverDrive folder. And it's a nicer experience for users to, to exist in. It uh, it's automatically synchronizes with Google Drive. So I make a change at either end, and it synced across back to the back to the other end. And I've got the option either to uh, to view these uh, documents, and I can view them either individually, or I can uh, filter through and feed through to the uh, to subsequent uh, it, uh, reports, etc. And I can uh, pop them out into a separate tab if I want to. Other things that I can do here, you notice that I can uh, I can replicate this, so I can actually have a copy function on here. So if I've got a standard template document that I want to copy, well, actually, I can do that in here within OverDrive, which makes the whole thing really, really easy. So I can, as I said, just display a list of, of documents in a folder. I'm particularly excited, but we're adding some functionality to it, at least including a filter. So if I search for children, for instance, it will find any document where uh, children is mentioned either in the title or in the content of the document, as in this case here. So again, in folder search is now available with OverDrive, uh, which makes it easy to find information. But another way that I can display information to my users is uh, particularly useful if I've got a very important document that I want to share. So it's a, a report or a guide or a handbook, something where people uh, regularly access that document. Essentially lying behind this section here is a, a Google document. And that Google document has been split into several pages. And what OverDrive allows me to do is just feedback through the, the pages and, and identify the areas that I want to, uh, want to access. Now, I can take this to the next stage, which makes it really interesting. I've got the ability to see this option here to what we call switch to edit mode. So now I'm taking the Google Doc. I'm ripping the contents out of that Google Doc. I'm displaying it appropriately on the page. And I'm adding some functionality, including pagination, formatting, et cetera. And now what I'm doing, and I'm allowing certain users, if they've got appropriate rights, to be able to edit that document on the page within OverDrive. So that makes the whole thing so much easier. It's not forcing users to go to Drive, to find the raw folder, to open up the document, to edit it, et cetera. It's doing it all within my OverDrive site. So again, just a real time saver for, uh, for my users. So I can do that if I've got an important document, I can embed that directly on the page, but I can also do things like create um, blogs very easily. So this is just a, a way for me to take a number of documents, um, kind of take the first paragraph and the first image and display them on the page. And then if the user is interested, they can go through. And again, this is automatically embedded on the page. So it, it fits with my scheme of the size of my, my cover theme, etc. So again, makes it easier. Now, I do something fairly similar with uh, Google Sheets. So, lying behind this page is a, a Google Sheet, and this is just a list of uh, information. You see, we've got quite a lot of, uh, lot of data in here. But what I can do, I can easily sort this. Actually, not very easy to do within, uh, within Google Sheets, but it can be done. And I can also filter on this so I can find particular keywords if I'm looking for particular surnames or if I'm looking for everything that relates to explosion, it will find all that information here. And then what I can do, I can either print or create a PDF from this filter. And I can even copy this to a clipboard and put it into my Google Sheets, et cetera. So again, I'm using the same data because this just exists within a Google Sheet. But instead of sharing that Google Sheet and, and asking my users to manipulate that data in a way which may not be natural to them, I'm actually giving them a much nicer experience and a way to handle and to integrate and, 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 and interpret that information, which is, uh, which is always very useful. And it's not just documents. So we've got the ability to include things like um, multiple calendars on a page. So here I've got multiple calendars displaying on the page, and I can decide how I want that information to be displayed. I can look for particular calendars, turn certain calendars off. I can color code them, etc. I've got complete ability. And again, I can change the way that that calendar information is displayed. So I've got this nice agenda view. Uh, which is uh, which is good, and it just allows me to dis dis display the information in a way that's most appropriate to my users. Now, I can also do the same thing for uh, Google Contacts. 
So anybody who's been using Google G Suite for a while, we know it's always been a bit of a bane that you can't share contacts. Um, well, now actually you can very easily with Overdrive. So I create a contact group. I pull that contact group into this page and I can display that information however I want to display it. Um, and I can, I've got using the filter search as well. So I can let's search for Angelo and it will find that information as, uh, as you can see there. So I'm taking information across G Suite. So docs, calendars, contacts, groups, even. I've got our, my own comments and the and notifications uh, process. And then I can pull information in from outside sources. So for instance, if I want to create a, um, a social feed page for my users, I'm pulling in information from Twitter and from Facebook as an example. And here we are advertising this uh, webinar, always very useful. And again, I can pull in information elsewhere as well. So not just from other websites, but actually other applications. So here I've got a, a Monday board uh, embed. I don't know whether anybody uses Monday, but it's uh, pretty cool. Um, and we're embedding that onto the page. And I can also do the similar thing for Awesome Table, if anybody use Awesome Table. Again, I'm pulling that into, uh, into this page and I can you know, have a play about and find the information. So Overdrive, Overdrive is becoming the, the central source of information, wherever that information sits, whatever subject we're talking about, it's being pulled into this one site. So that's kind of a brief overview. I won't go into how we build pages, what we can do with them. I think hopefully it's giving you a good indication. But what I actually want to do now is show you workflow. So you see that workflow just neatly fits into your Overdrive site. It's just another page where users can access. And the way that this works is basically I'm creating a template. Um, whatever that template exists, uh, I'm, I'm asking my users to complete that information um, to, uh, to initiate a request. So here, this big blue button here, this is mocked up as a little bit like a purchase requisition. Uh, we need more tables. Let's go for that. Um, so it's a purchase requisition. So you imagine a purchase requisition. I'm completing information about the request. It might be, why do I need it? What cost there is? Great. Let me uh, just refresh that. At least you know that the demonstration is, uh, is live. Uh, and here we are. We've actually created that. So I'll just go into, uh, into that request. And you notice here that I'm the requester now. So I, it's got my template here uh, and it's uh, opened up the document and you see that it's just a document. It's a Google doc. It could quite easily be a Google sheet uh, or even a slide deck, it makes no difference. But I can complete the information that's on here. Any information that I want to include uh, with my request. And you see, I've got these, uh, these buttons up here, uh, and the one that I'm interested in is request approval. So I'm saying that I've completed all this information. I'm going to request approval, and I'm just going to say, please approve. Click OK. And once that goes back to the list, you'll see that the status has changed. It's now pending. Now, what I'm going to do is a little bit confusing, but I'm going to switch to another account to see how that would appear uh, to the uh, to an approver. Uh, so here we have, I believe I'm in the right account here. Uh, this is uh, an approver who doesn't have a, a um, uh, authorization. So I'll move on to this account. And you see this is uh, another account. You see that it was over here. It's Mark on a different com different domain. So now I'm actually sharing outside our domain. And you see Mark's got a notification email. So Mark is an approver for these requests. So if he comes into here, he can see the information, he knows who's requested it, when it is, and it gives him easy access into the application. So all you need to do is click on that link it opens up the site, he signs in with, with uh, whichever account he wants to use. You see we've got more options besides just Google, you can sign in with Facebook, Microsoft even. And he takes them directly into this workflow. And you know which ones I'm dealing with. This is the pending one that I'm, that I'm wanting to, uh, to deal with. So he, Mark can come into here, he can open up the document, he can read the information, and he's got two choices now. Uh, two main choices, you can either reject this request 
or it can approve it. If it rejects it, it just goes back into the button as, as pending and the requester gets a notification to say that uh, the request has been uh, uh, not approved and can you add some more information. Uh, I've also got the option if I want to, to reassign it to another authorizer. So it's either above my sign off limit or I can't deal with it or I need more information, just send it to somebody else. Or indeed, in this case, what I'll do, I'll just come over here and I'll say approved. Yes, please go ahead. And again, Mark as the approver is taken back to the, the workflow list and he's got the status as a approved now you see on this particular uh, opportunity, this request. Let me just go back to uh, the original requester. So you can see this information. This hasn't re refreshed, so I can just do a quick refresh on the page and you'll see that this information is here now. So in this list here, we're seeing um, a request of all status, so whether they've been ejected, whether they're in draft or approved, etc. And we can turn that on or off depending on what's appropriate for your workflow and your processes. So it may be that anything that's been approved doesn't appear within this list. It appears somewhere else. Now, if I open up this particular uh, request, you see there's not much information in there, but I want to show you this uh, view history. So this kind of shows what the, the process has been about this particular request. So when was it raised? What happened to it? Why was it rejected? Uh, the fact that it was requested again, and then it was finally approved. You know, imagine on some of these, that we're going backwards and forwards a few times, requesting more information before the final approval. Well, actually, all that information, all that history is retained with the request. So it makes it really easy for me to go back and just understand what's going on. I'm going to show you a little bit about the back end and how we create this. This might be interesting to you. So it's very, very simple. I just choose my uh, template. So what is the table that I'm using? What document or, or sheet, etc.? Uh, who can approve it? And I'm just choosing from a list of uh, site users. Very, very simple to say who's in approving. Uh, what text is on that of, uh, the re new request button? And what do the new file names came? You see, we've got a sequential number in here and a particular date format, uh, which is why it's created with that format. And you see here, this is where we choose what files are available uh, within to, to, uh, to view within this folder, depending on what stage they're in. Okay, so I think that's kind of everything that I want to show you on, on workflow. As I said, that there's, there's a lot to it in terms of terms of what you can do, but it's actually very simple. A, to set up, and B, for users to understand how to request and how to approve. Uh, but it is very, very powerful. And what I want to do, if I go back to the presentation, I'll talk about some of the, uh, the ways in which it can be used. And this is what some customers um, who are on our um, early adopter program have got early access to the application. This is what they're using it for. And the, the uses for workflow are many and varied. Um, and the way that we've in, implemented it for OverDrive by using the document as a template gives it the most flexibility that's available. Um, and you'll all know that the workflows that you have within your organization, you'll also have an idea of which are the most suitable for use with an overdrive module. So we suggest that first you look at the processes which are heavily dependent on paper-based actions, because they're the ones which can lead to mistakes, inaccuracies, and time delays. So what we're doing as a special bonus for attendees of the webinar, we're offering you the chance to work with our consulting team uh, to take one of your processes and convert it for use with the OverDrive workflow solution. You see that it's very easy to set up, but actually there are some uh, intricacies in that setting up process. So we want to get the first one right for you. And we'll provide the necessary licenses and the consulting time to set up the OverDrive site and help you implement the, the workflow. So this really will give you full insight into what OverDrive can do, what the benefits are of OverDrive workflow and how it will work within your organization. So um, there are a number of ways in which you continue your investigation of uh, OverDrive. Um, if you haven't done so already, 
you could create one or more trial sites uh, to test some of the features which we've shown uh, and some of the things we haven't had time to, to go through, uh, along with the workflow modular, which is of particular interest. We'll send you links after the session to our public demonstration sites so you can visit them and see what your finished site uh, may look like. Um, and we'll also arrange a, a, an individual, individual consultation with either us or one of our partners uh, to help you set up your first workflow uh, process free of charge, as I discussed before. Um, so that's, that's it for the session. Hopefully that's given an insight A into overdrive and also B into the, the workflow module. Um, we'll follow up, as I said, with an email with some more information. If there's any questions that, uh, that you have, if you want to look at anything in particular, then please come back to us uh, and we'll happily uh, talk through the options with you. Um, that's great. Thank you for your time. Bye now.